Hi there, and welcome to this video on A-Level Biology for the AQA specification, focusing on the topic of organisms exchanging substances with their environment, and in particular, on surface area to volume ratio. I'm Manisha from StudyMind, where we help you to revise A-Level Biology with our helpful video tutorials tailored to your subject, your specification, and to you. If you're new here, please make sure to click that subscribe button. And whilst you're watching, feel free to leave any comments down below of anything you're unsure about, and let us know if it's your first time watching so we can send you our free revision resources. We also have helpful timestamps to guide you through the specification. So, let's get started. Welcome to lesson one of three in this tutorial, covering surface area to volume ratio. This is the first video in our series of three lessons on the topic of exchange. In the last lesson, we looked at the immune system and how it works. Here are the AQA specification points for today's lesson. Feel free to pause the video now and read through them before we begin. Here are the key learning objectives for today's lesson. We'll start off with surface area to volume ratio, move on to calculating the ratio, and finally look at the gas exchange in organisms. Organisms must exchange substances. All organisms, unicellular and multicellular, are separated from their external environment. In order to survive, they have to exchange food, gases, waste and other materials with their environment. Most of this exchange will happen at the cell membranes. Surface area is the total area of the parts of the cell that are in direct contact with the environment. When studying gas exchange, the surface area of the cell is the total area of the cell membrane. The volume of the cell is a measure of the size of the contents of it. The volume of the cell can be roughly approximated by using the formula for the volume of a sphere, as shown here. The surface area to volume ratio will determine the rate of exchange. The ratio is measured by first calculating the surface area of the cell and dividing it by the volume using the following formula. Surface area to volume ratio is the surface area divided by the volume. The greater the surface area to volume ratio, the greater the efficiency of the exchange. As cells grow, their surface area to volume ratio will decrease, decreasing the efficiency of their exchange. Cells can divide into two new cells and provide a greater surface area to volume ratio. As an object increases in size, its surface area to volume ratio is going to decrease. An apple has a bigger surface area to volume ratio than a car. Students often find this concept difficult to understand, but pause the video here to have a think about it carefully. We'll now look at the two types of organisms, small and large. Small organisms have a very large surface area to volume ratio and therefore can rely on diffusion for all of their gas exchange. Unicellular organisms don't have to have a specialised gas exchange system because they have a high surface area to volume ratio a small diffusion distance to the centre of the cell, and a small demand for substances such as oxygen. Multicellular organisms cannot rely on diffusion through the body surface like unicellular organisms. This is because they have a very low surface area to volume ratio. 
and there's a long diffusion distance to the centre of the cell. There's also a high demand for oxygen. In large organisms, certain organ systems are specialised for exchange. These organ systems have structures and cells that have a high surface areas in order to maximise the efficiency of the exchange with the environment. One example of this are the alveoli in the lungs, which are involved in the gas exchange of many organisms. Small organisms can rely on diffusion to supply and transport everything they need, which is pretty simple. On the other hand, larger organisms need to have a gas exchange system to exchange the gas, but then they also need a transport system to carry substances like oxygen around the body. We have now completed lesson one. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to subscribe by clicking down below and leaving a comment of a topic that you'd like to see a video on. Click here to watch the rest of our videos in our A-Level Biology series, or visit our website, studymind.co.uk, for past paper compilations by topic and specification.